Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com. Now last week I posted a video showing 10 tips to make your e-bike go faster. And there were tons of great comments and suggestions, things I left out, and tips from people, and uh, what else did you guys say? Oh, people who tried out things that I suggested and how it, well it worked for them. So I just wanted to do a follow-up video and share some of the things that you guys shared with me. Now the first one is from Andrew here who said that he swapped out his old stock uh, knobby tires for lighter weight and smoother tires and he got four miles per hour extra than what he had with the old tires. So that's a huge improvement. Way to go, Andrew. Next, Ahmed said that he was able to change his tire size in his display on his e-bike and bumped him up from 36 to 45 kilometers per hour. And then Major Li Long Wang, oh, oh goodness, I just got that right now. Okay, so, so the Major, he said that he had a speed limiting wire um, on his controller, and what he was able to do is instead of just snipping it, he ran it up to a button on his handlebars, and that way he could switch on and off whether or not he had the limit, and so he could have sort of a street legal e-bike or a faster e-bike. So I thought that was a really cool suggestion and something that I hadn't thought about. And then there's Benjamin Chong who said that he overvolted his 24 volt e-bike to 36. And he said that bumped him up from 25 to 40 kilometers per hour, which was a huge increase, though apparently it came at the expense of eventually burning out his motor. So you do need to be careful and make sure that if you are going to overvolt your motor, if you're a heavier rider or you're going up hills, that you take it easy and you don't use high power for too long because that can burn out a motor eventually. Speaking of which, Dave asked about uh, what kind of issues there are with higher voltage on a motor. And so that's exactly it. You just want to be careful that if you're overvolting your motor, that you don't pull too much power for too long because that's going to put a lot more heat build up into the motor than it was designed for. So oftentimes these motors, they can spin faster with higher voltage, but you got to be careful about overheating. And then Carlo asked something similar, it was how to tell how much voltage the controller can handle. Now for the controller, the best thing to do is, if you're comfortable doing this, just open up your controller and look inside for the capacitors. They usually look like these can looking things. And on the capacitor, there's going to be written what voltage those are rated for. And that will usually be the maximum voltage that your controller can handle. Next, I had a lot of people asking about the gear I was using, both the e-bike and my helmet. Now the bike is one that I've actually been reviewing recently and you can see my full review of it over at electrek.co and I'll put a link to that in the description below. But basically this is an awesome e-bike. It's the Oyama CX-E8D Series 2 bike. It's, I know it's a mouthful, but it's a really great bike. Uh, it's got hydraulic disc brakes, it's got an IKEA motor back here, not a Bafang like a lot of bikes have, but actually a higher quality motor. It's super comfortable. It's got a three-point folding mechanism so it folds down really small. Uh, it comes with Schwab tires with this awesome reflective strip, which sounds kind of hokey, but it actually really lights up at night. And it's just a really well-designed e-bike. Uh, integrated headlight, eight uh, speed assist levels. It's actually a class one e-bike, so there's no throttle. You do have to pedal, but when you pedal, it's going to give you the speed assist. So this is an awesome e-bike, and definitely check out the review that I posted over Electrek, because that'll have all the extra information that I put about this bike. Uh, on the helmet front, this was actually just the cheapest helmet I could find in this style on Amazon. I think it's a triple eight, but I'll put a link to this as well. I really liked this helmet, even though it's just a simple helmet. And then there were a few other people that commented with more tips, things I hadn't thought about. For example, RV added two more tips, was one to ride safely at those higher speeds and, you know, use protection and caution. And then uh, 12 is to be courteous against uh, other cyclists and pedestrians. Basically, don't be a jerk. Then there's Francois who said that uh, more parallel cells equals less voltage sag, which equals higher speed. And this is true. I talked about ways to reduce voltage sag, but I left out the fact that just using more cells in parallel if you build your own batteries or getting a higher capacity battery, like opting for 20 amp hours instead of 15 amp hours if you buy a ready-made battery, those are both good methods to reduce voltage sag and have higher top end speed and also more power. And then there's Bruno who had a number of great suggestions. If you guys don't know Bruno, check out his channel. He has tons of great content. He's a really funny guy and he's all about more power. So a few things he suggested was to transfer your kit, you know, your motor, your battery, your controller over to a bike with bigger wheels. There's gonna be instant more speed for you. Uh, the next thing is that if you have a Bosch, a Shimano, or a Giant e-bike, those have speed limiters that are built into the rear chainstay. So you can actually cover that magnet or move it to the uh, crank on the pedals and that way you're measuring your crank speed instead of your wheel speed and you kind of trick the bike into thinking that you're going slower and then it will let you go faster. Let's see, he added uh, tip 13 was for mid-drive bikes. Um, you could actually change your cassette, so make sure you have a smaller cassette in the rear or a bigger um, uh, chain ring up front and that way you'll be basically pulling more chain with each revolution and you'll be going faster. 
And lastly is to explore field weakening. Now this is really complicated, and to be honest, I don't understand it entirely, but basically field weakening is going to uh, play with the settings and how your controller sends the electricity to your motor, and it's gonna give you more speed at the uh, expense of some efficiency. So your motor is going to go faster, but it's gonna run a little hotter, and you're not gonna get to, you're not gonna be able to go as far. So definitely look up field weakening if you wanna get into some like nitty gritty stuff here but it's probably outside the scope of a lot of people who are just getting into e-bikes. And then John Galt said that another way to go faster is to just use a recumbent bike, one of those bikes where you're basically laying down while riding. And that's a great point. Those have a lot less wind resistance, so you can definitely go faster with the same kit, you know, same motor and battery, if you're just laying down. And then some people had some questions. Gavin Taylor was asking is, you could cool the battery to reduce voltage sag by adding a DC fan or two to the case. And you definitely could do that. Um, I haven't tried that myself, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. I would probably mount the fan on the underside of the battery so you don't have you know, water ingress issues with uh, you know, rain or splashing, but I think that would be fine. And uh, Utsav asked if you could modify the existing motor instead of swapping it for a faster motor. And you definitely can. It's fairly complicated, but you should look up something called a delta Y conversion, also called a delta star conversion. And basically this rewires the motor, and so it changes the way the electricity moves between the phases of the motor, and you'll get about 70% higher speed than you had before at a reduction in torque. So you have about 70% lower torque, but you're going faster. So if you want to void your warranty and um, get into you know, the nuts and bolts, not really nuts and bolts, the, uh, the wiring and soldering of your motor, then this is something to look up, Delta Y, and it is a way you can modify an existing motor to go faster. All right, I think that's uh, all the comments that I pulled out this time. Thank you guys so much for commenting. You know, I get tons of comments, sometimes over 100 a day, and I really try to get to as many as I can, but I thought that this video would be a good chance to just take a whole bunch and stick them in one video and talk about them. Uh, last but not least, it's time to announce the winner of the uh, book giveaway for my last video, and the winning commenter who was randomly selected is... Rodrigo Vasquez. So congratulations, Rodrigo. Just shoot me an email. Let me know which one of my books you'd like, either the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, uh, DIY Solar Power, or DIY Lithium Batteries. And um, let me know where to send it. Just uh, check my channel page. You'll find my email address. Let me know which one you'd like. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment on this video, anything you want. And at the end of my next video, I will randomly select another commenter to win. And if you don't want to wait that long for one of my books, you can always find them on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.